Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley, and welcome to another video. As the mirror's coming up here, I know one of our resolutions is always to keep things a little bit cleaner. And the same thing applies to my craft room. The other day, I spent a ton of time getting it clean in here, because you couldn't even see the floor before I started. And although it's clean, it's not really clean and organized so that I can use it functionally. When I moved into this craft room three years ago, I shoved everything in drawers and didn't think about it super methodically. And that way, when I pull everything out, it doesn't really have a home to go back into, so it stays messy. But now I'm gonna work on finding specific solutions for every different item in my craft room to make sure that everything goes back and stays nice and clean. And this is probably gonna take several videos to get fully through, but I thought I'd bring you guys along on the journey instead of just showing you the final result. And this way, when I find different storage solutions that I love, I'll share them with all of you guys so if you're struggling with the same exact problem, hopefully these will help you. With everything I talk about in today's video, I'll have it linked down below so you can check it out. And using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, Let's get cleaning. Starting off, I had been looking for the perfect way to store lunar paste and solar paste for a long time. And I finally stumbled upon the perfect solution. This is a plastic stadium organizer and it is perfect to store tons of your lunar paste in. Lots of you guys have been asking about this storage solution and I wanted to make sure that I loved it before I shared it. And I've been using it for the past couple of months and I've absolutely fallen in love with the storage. What I like about it so much is that each level is raised at a different height. So you're still able to see all of the amazing colors. So you know what you're grabbing and then you're easily able to pull them out and put them right back in. And they're not stacked on each other. So they're really easy to get out of here. This makes for a pretty colorful display and also a really easy way to grab the colors that you need and start working and put them back super quickly and easily so that things don't get disorganized. Now as my paste collection is expanding, I actually need another one of these organizers. So this is what it comes like. It came from Amazon. I love this, we got some good unpackaging ASMR going on here. And then putting this together is quite simple. It comes with a pack of screws and nuts and also a little screwdriver. So starting off with one side, this is the orientation you're gonna want. You're gonna take the first little bucket here, line it up with the holes on the side and you'll put your screw in from the outside and then grab a nut and screw that on from the inside to tighten it. And then for each hole, just keep following those same steps. So put a screw through and then screw on the nut. And then we'll do this side while we're at it. And I'm not fully tightening everything until I have them all in and can make sure that it's level. Then I can kind of eyeball this and make sure it's nice and level and then hold the nut from the inside and use the screwdriver to tighten these into place. And then that's nice and tight and it's not gonna move anywhere. So usually while I'm screwing these in and putting this together, I'll put a TV show in the background, watch that and it goes by pretty quickly. All right, last one. And then we'll tighten this right into place. All right, then it's as simple as that to create. It comes together pretty quickly and it makes a really beautiful storage. I love that it's clear so you can see through it to exactly what's inside. All right, and I also wanted to measure, these are about two inch openings inside here so it can fit anything that's a little bit less than two inches. I wanted to be sure to share that so you can know exactly what will fit in it from your stash and if this will work for you. So what I really love about this is of course that your lunar and solar paste will fit inside of here so you can just place them right in. They fit perfectly and it fits six pastes per row with a little bit of wiggle room too. So they're not super tight in here, which is what I like about them. They're really easy to pull out and store. But what I also love about this is you can store lots more than just that. So you can store like your favorite cleaners, your spray bottle, that distressed sprayer will fit perfectly in there. Your four inch mint tape roll will fit right in there. You can also store some of your favorite tape runners. These are the ones from ThermalWeb and they fit really nicely in there as well. So you can also start storing some of your favorite tools and use it as kind of a display rack because I love that if this is in front of you and it's kind of on risers like that, you're easily able to grab from any type of level in here and pick out your favorite tools for your project and start getting to work. Wait a minute, I also just thought of different embossing powders. So these also fit in here absolutely perfectly. So these are the Ranger embossing powder jars. These are the 0.63 ounce jars, just kind of the regulation size, and they fit perfectly inside of here as well. So you can really store a lot inside of these. I think this two inch opening is perfect for a lot of the different mediums inside your craft room. So this one was totally a win for me. I'll leave it linked down below. It's from Amazon. It's been one of my favorites for storing the lunar solar paste and like I said, lots of other stuff too. All right, next I wanna show you something that I've been doing this year that I really love. It helps me send more cards because all the supplies to send the cards are super organized in one place. I've definitely sent a lot more cards to friends than I usually do this year, all because of this, because if you have everything ready to go, it makes it super easy to send them. So I'm gonna start off with this mid-sized clear square container. I'll link down below where you can find some of these. 
definitely check out some local stores like TJ Maxx or Marshalls. I also find that Target has this really great brand called Bright Room, and it's got a lot of clear containers like this for a great price as well. Now I'm gonna do something that you might think is a little bit weird and take a smaller clear square container and stack this right inside of here. This is going to house all of the different envelopes that I have in rainbow order. I like to have a different rainbow assortment of envelopes because it makes the card feel a little bit more special and kind of separates it out from some of the junk mail that some people might get in just a regular white envelope. These envelopes happen to be from Gina K Designs. They happen to be some of my favorites. They've got a nice basic flap on them and they're really great for sending off cards. And this is just a really small color assortment of the colors that she has. She's got a great selection. So I'll leave a link down below to her website where you can check it out. One of the other things that I want to put in here that I don't think that I talk about enough are these washi tape strips. I actually designed these at the beginning of my career. They don't get too much love because I don't necessarily show mailing cards in a lot of my videos. Now I'm gonna be so honest, we have a limited stock of these, so once they run out, they're definitely gonna be out. So stock up on them if you like them. It comes with eight sheets inside of a pack and they're beautiful designs for sending off any cards to a friend or loved one. So instead of having big and bulky washi tape packs, these sheets are really super thin to store, which is amazing. There's cute little animals holding on to florals. I I love this snail mail design. It actually has a little bit of gold foiling on each one of the snails. This is a great basic that I love to put on almost any envelope just to make it a little bit extra special. You can also layer these up and put the grass right beneath the animals to make it look like they're standing in there. There's cute little ladybugs and a nice stripe design as well. So I've got several packs of these. You can see that I've used quite a bit of the designs off of them. So I'm definitely going to restock with another new pack, but really great fun designs to put on your envelopes. So once I got my card inside of here, instead of licking the envelope, cause I don't really love to do that. I like to just go in with washi tape. So I'll just carefully peel off one of the strips and I'm gonna use the snail mail one. That one happens to be one of my favorite designs just because it works so well with any different occasion. Just place it right across the envelope and it's perfectly sized to fit on the envelope really nicely. It's got a good amount of sticks so it seals it off really well and check out just how adorable that is. And like I said, there's a little bit of gold foiling that you can see in there. It just makes the envelope that much more special. All right, and scrapboard.com sells these really great sturdy little plastic bags, which I really like. They've got a zipper on them, so nothing is gonna fall out of here. From the outside, this looks like a mesh bag with little holes in it, but this is all plastic. There's no holes in it, so nothing's going to fall out of the bag. It just kind of helps to reinforce it. But what I love about this is you can still see inside, so you know exactly what's inside that little bag. So I'm gonna take all my different washi tape strips packs. I got quite a few in there, and zip them right up into this little storage sleeve. All right, then we'll tuck that right inside of there as well. And then to finish this off, I've grabbed another bag, and we've got our stamps. This is what makes it so easy for me to send because I've got everything on hand. So I actually just recently went back to the post office to buy some more stamps and like how cute are these? These little winter animals were so adorable. So I had to grab them. And then I also got a whole sheet of these thank yous because these are gonna be so great for sending out thank you cards. I love the sort of gold foiling that's on these ones. All right, so it's just as simple as tucking these little guys right inside of the bag and then zip bring it up. And this is going to separate it nicely from everything else in the bin so that you have your stamp set separate, your washi tape separate, and then you have all of your envelopes ready to go. And the next one is just a little personal thing. You're probably not gonna have at home in your mailing set, but I do have these little stickers. One of them is the bear with the Simon Hurley Create logo. And then one of them is this little bear crafting, which I think is so adorable. So I'm gonna leave these stickers inside of here as well. But now all I need to do is just grab this whole bin when I want to mail something out. Having everything stored in one bin makes it super easy to get the task you're looking to do done, doesn't make it a huge process, and it makes it easy to put away so this stuff doesn't get lost in your craft room and messy things up. All right, now let's talk about storing things in drawers. You guys know I love separating things out by little containers. It makes it easy because I can go into a drawer, pull the whole container out, bring it onto my desk and then put it away once it's needed and it makes it super modular to store things. I found these guys from Target. These were in the bright room section. They've got these really great little lids on them so you can store things inside of them and not have them fall out. Oh, also good to mention these are stackable so they won't fall out of each other like that in case you wanna stack them up. But I've been loving these different size containers for consumables that I use in my craft room. That way I can easily refill them because if I'm gonna be honest, the packages things come in take up a lot more space than the actual product itself. All right, so these I found to be especially helpful for blending tools because I have a lot of these blending tool handles. These come in packs of two, you can buy them on sale and that's when I get quite a few of them. So I use one for each individual ink color, but I also use these a lot for lunar and solar paste or if I'm teaching in-person classes. So really nice and compact in this larger canister. And then with this smaller one, 
I like these because I can put them in drawers facing upwards like this. So I can still see inside of them, I can see exactly what everything is if I need to get to it. And then all I need to do is pull it out of a drawer and easily just pull this lid off to get inside of them. So inside of one of these, I have these domed foam blending tools. I really like these guys. And if you know anything about the packaging, the blister pack is a lot bigger than the actual foams that are inside of here. So being able to take these out and put lots of the packs inside of here, it saves tons of space and allows me to store a lot in one container rather than having each one of those packs. And then this one, I use the flat foams. I use these for different things. Usually I use the domed ones for inks and sometimes I use the flat ones for lunar paste and sometimes I use the domed ones for lunar paste. It just depends on what kind of look I'm going for. If I wanted to graze the surface a little bit more and not sink into things, I usually use these flat foams. So I have a container full of the flat foams that I can use on my projects as well. So I've gotta say, if you're a crafter with lots of little bits and bobs that you need to store, and you don't want them falling out or going all over the place, and you also want to see them like this, these containers from Right Room from the Target brand are gonna be amazing for you. All right, so this is what it looks like in here. You can see just how modular that is with that longer one on the side and then the other two right next to each other like this. And it's super easy to just get your fingers in there, pull it out and place it back in for storage once you're ready to. All right, next let's talk about one of my favorite storage containers that I found for my craft room, surely for the amount of ways that I can use it in my craft room. It's so versatile, it's from Amazon. It's a pretty great price, super modular, and fits a lot of different items. And that would be this clear container. I believe this comes in a pack of four, and what's really awesome about this clear container is that these little plastic dividers actually pop out. So there's three different dividers in here. You can have them in, but you can also leave them out in case you need a bigger opening. And then they just quickly and easily slide back into those slots. And there's also little holes on the bottom so they can just kind of lock into place like this and stay nice and sturdy inside of this container. Having things separated is a game changer for me so that things don't get cluttered and piled on top of each other. So I really like that about these containers. One of the things I've been using them for is the paste tool set. So I've got lots of these different paste tool sets open. It comes with two scrapers and a pack. As you can see, I've got quite a few of them place them right inside of here and they fit in there perfectly. And then it also comes with different palette knives. So you can just take your different palette knives and place these inside of here as well. So that's one way that I like to use these little containers, but I use this for so much more than just that. I have one of them for all my acrylic blocks. So if you guys know in the Simon Hurley Create line, the regular acrylic block pack has the smaller one for sentiments and then a larger one that fits most of the stamps from my line. So again, I purchased lots of these and have lots of them open because I use a ton of acrylic blocks on my project. Raise your hand if you're just like me and you kind of keep a acrylic blocks all over with stamps on them. And then finally, once you run out of your whole stash, you have to go in and clean them all. That's sort of how I am. So I've removed that middle slot so that lots of these medium-sized acrylic blocks can fit inside of there, which is super nice. Again, that versatility is super helpful. And then in the back here, I have some of the large Simon Hurley Create acrylic blocks. What I love about these is that they fit some of the strips of my background stamps. They also fit some of the larger rubber stamps and they also fit stamping foam really well on top of here. So a little bit heavy, but a really great storage container for the acrylic blocks. I love this. And you can keep them sorted by size and different shapes as well. I also keep all of my pre-cut cardstock inside of here. So all of my stark white cardstock, I've cut down to different card panels. So this is four and one fourth by five and a half inches. You can get four out of each sheet of cardstock. So I just cut those down ahead of time. And this is what I always work with and grab for my videos. And then behind it in another one of those slots. So again, it's great to have those organized. I have my Simon Hurley stark white cardstock cut down in half lengthwise and then folded in half. And this creates a top folding card. So I've got lots of card bases in here ready as well. This is a huge time saver to have these pre-cut and folded. I also find that I save cardstock this way because if I've already got them prepared, it makes it so I get a lot of use out of each sheet of cardstock. Whereas if I'm cutting them for each individual card, usually the scraps will get left behind and I don't end up using them and then they either get thrown away or used kind of improperly for different projects. Whereas here, we've got them nice and pre-cut and we can use them for every project that we go through. And then in this last one, I've got all the dividers in here and I use this for different colors of cardstock. So I've got the warms, the cool colors, and then some of the neutrals and metallics in the back. And this front section I use for all the scraps. So these are things like if I've cut lots of different pieces out of it, I tend to put them in this front section. So this is what I dig through first before I go and grab a real piece of cardstock. And again, I got these cut down to four and one fourth by five and a half. These make them a more manageable size to run through the die cutting machine. And again, I find that I waste less because if I pre-cut them like this, less is going to waste when I'm doing my die cutting. That way I'm not chopping down a whole sheet of cardstock just to die cut one thing. Instead, I can use these smaller sheets and then put all my scraps in here until they're fully cut with. 
And I got those first three containers in this top drawer here. So these are some of my most used supplies. I got my acrylic blocks right next to me, my stark white cardstock right next to me, and also this colored cardstock I use quite a bit. So I like to have these right in my top drawer, along with some of the tools that I use really frequently. And in this little opening, I actually keep my sprayer, my mint tape, and my favorite stamp cleaner too. So none of these compartments go to waste, which is really nice. All right, now let's talk about my stamp storage because this is something that's actually been working really well for me and I really wanna share it with you guys because it's super inexpensive to store your stamps like this and it makes it really easy to just start creating with them right away. So starting off with my large clear photopolymer stamp set, here is how a stamp set comes. This is the perfect cat's stamp set and there's this little hang tab on top with this kind of melted seal there in between and all I do is take this into a paper trimmer or you can just grab a large pair of scissors and just go in and chop that top part off. So just go right in between the label of the cardstock and that seal and cut the top of that seal off of there. This is what that should look like then and it'll have an open plastic flap on the top. So then all you need to do is take your clear stamp set on the carrier sheet that it comes in and just store it right inside of there. It's super easy to do. So literally, this is how I store my stamps. It's that easy. I'm not buying anything at this point. These seem to hold up pretty well. There's also this little adhesive flap at the bottom. I tend to not open it from there because the more you open and close it from there, the more it has a chance to rip the plastic. So that's why right away I just chop off the top and I just slide it inside and out from the top and that works really well for me. Now let's talk about stencils. So stencils are the exact same way where they got that little sort of plastic weld on the top. You're gonna wanna cut in between the paper and that little plastic again. So you get a sort of sleeve like this, right? So you can go in and out and pull your stencil right out of the package super easily. But stencils are a bit more difficult because they got this little fold hang tab on here as well. So all you're gonna do is unfold this like this and then there's a little crease line right there. I also chop across that crease line and that leaves you with this nice navy blue background with the Simon Hurley stencils. So you can easily see your beautiful stencil design on here, but then the back has that nice example and the name on it as well. So once you got all that done, it's really easy to take out your stencils and slip them back in just from that top area. And again, it makes a little pocket. And again, I don't use this little adhesive from the bottom. I find that cutting this off makes the plastic a lot more durable over time. So again, saving tons of money because you're not buying storage. And it's really great because this navy blue background makes it easy to see the design. All right, now some stamp sets have coordinating die sets that go along with it that you can buy separately. These are made by Spellbinders. This happens to be the die set that coordinates with the Halftone Holiday stamp set. Now I used to store my dies on magnetic vent covers, but I found they were a little bit flimsy and some of the little dies would fall off. So I was a little worried about storing them on there. So instead I found these magnet cards from Stampin' Storage. They come in a variety of different sizes. I find that six by seven works for most die sets, but you might wanna size up for larger die sets. The specific size comes with 10 in a pack and I really love these. They've got a nice kind of thick chipboard back to them. So this is a lot sturdier. You can see if I bend it, there's really no flex or give in the magnet. Nothing is flying off of it. So I have peace of mind that all these little tiny dies are gonna stay on there really nicely. And if I wanna get something off, they have just the slightest amount of give to them. So that if I bend it from the back, I can easily pull off a die and place it right back on. The magnet's nice and strong and everything sticks really well to here. So I've been really loving these stamp and storage magnet cards for just how sturdy and great quality they are. Now, if it coordinates with a stamp set like this, I just take it and place it in the back of that stamp pocket. It seems to hold up pretty well in there. You've gotta be a little bit gentle because that magnet's pretty heavy and you don't want it to rip the plastic but then it's stored nicely with that stamp set. And what I love so much about these magnet cards is if it's a standalone die set like these, so these are the Simon's Snow Globe sets and one of the add-on sets for Simon's Snow Globes, I've just stored them right on top of the magnet sheet and I just keep these outside of any sort of stamp pocket because I'm not worried about the dies falling off because they're so nice and sturdy. I just place these inside of a plastic bin and I can easily flip through all the die sets that I have and I'm not worried about these bending or anything falling off because they're so incredibly sturdy. So even if you use magnetic vent covers for the ones you're gonna store inside of a sleeve along with your stamps, that's totally great. But I like these for standalone dies especially because I don't put them inside of a pocket and I'm not worried about them falling off and they're sturdy enough to stand on their own. Now let's talk about storing the Simon Hurley background stamps. So this is how the background stamps come. I pull them right out of the plastic sleeve and I actually end up discarding that sleeve. They come on a rectangle of plastic like this and I don't necessarily love that extra plastic hanging off the edges like that, but I do like the plastic on the stamp 
because this cling stamp has that cling to it and I don't want there to get dust on there. And also it's a little bit flimsier without the plastic. So I keep that plastic stuck down to the stamp and usually nine times out of 10 when I'm stamping with it, I end up just placing it up facing up my desk like this. So that's why I keep the plastic onto it. It makes it really easy for storage. And of course you can peel it off if you wanna use it on an acrylic block or instead of a stamping tool too. So what I end up doing is I go in with a large shear like this and I just cut right along the red rubber stamp. Our stamps are die cut around the edges so they got a little bit of shape and curve to them. I try to get as close as that as possible without actually cutting the red rubber. So just kind of follow along as close as you can. If you want to, you can leave a little bit more plastic on there, but I like to get rid of as much as I can. So I love just leaving that plastic on it because it makes it nice and sturdy. So you don't need to store these inside of any plastic envelopes or anything like that. It's really easy to just place these right inside of a bin. You're able to flip through them because they're nice and sturdy like that and see all the designs. We also have these indexed as well so you can see the designs really easily on the front of the background stamp and know exactly what you're gonna get. So you don't need to waste any money on envelopes for these either. And now there's another kind of stamp in my line that we've been doing recently, which is just a rubber stamp set. These actually have a thicker piece of plastic. And we did this for a reason because we want you to keep this piece of plastic for storage. So pull it outside of the sleeve that it comes in, but leave it on these plastic sheets. This I store right along with my background stamps because it makes it easy to flip through with the really thick clear sheet that it comes with. And again, these stamps are indexed, so it's really easy to see what you have as you're flipping through along with your background stamps. All right, so in this drawer on the other side of me, I usually keep this one open as well. And this is where I keep all of my stamp sets so I can easily just flip through them and see everything that I have. It's getting a little full, so I'm gonna need to empty this out or get another bin pretty soon. Here I have all my background stamps or rubber stamp sets. If there's a coordinating die set, I keep it along with it. And then again, you're able to easily flip through this and find all the designs really easily. That's in a separate plastic bin in here. In the front here, I have all my different stencils that we've ever made. Again, I cut the top off on these so it's really easy to slide those in and out of those sheets. That is what worked really well for me for stamp, die, background stamp, and stencil storage. That's been working for years, so I thought I would share it in today's video. It doesn't take a lot of extra money the way that I store them, and they're really easy to flip through and see exactly what you have too. Let's also talk about ink storage because that's something that's been working really well for me as well. I really love ink storage because I use it a lot, so having a slotted dividing case for them makes it really easy to pull them out and put them right back into their place, and will have you using them a lot more than just stacking them on top of each other. I have a cheaper option for the ink storage, and also something that's a little bit more expensive, but super high quality and has lasted me years. This one is the first and cheaper option. This one I got from Amazon. I believe it's around $24. And again, it's a stadium organizer. So what I love about this is that it starts kind of lowered and it gradually gets taller. So you can still see all the ink colors throughout. They're kind of peeking out from the front. So you don't need to necessarily label anything because you can see exactly what color you're going to be grabbing. It's a pretty solid kind of foam core storage. It's got kind of a protected front layer onto it, but it definitely is a foam core. So you do have to be a little bit more careful with it, but it's fairly sturdy. It's got lots of different compartments for the inks. And again, these fit inside of here really nicely for storing them. I think for the price point, this storage is absolutely unbeatable. If you wanna get several of them and line the back of your desk with them for lots of different ink colors, you totally can. But I just love that each one has an individual slot so it's easy to pull out, see all of your inks and get lots of use out of them. I have a full video on how to put this one together and all the different things you could do with it, which I'll link down below so you can check it out. Next, I wanna talk about several of my favorite units from Stampin' Storage to store your ink pads. This right here is one of the units to store your ink pads. And these are super high quality, wood units. And then I believe this inside piece is particle board, but it's got really nice separators and dividers. It also has little finger holes to help you pull these inks out and make it really easy to do. You can also get them now finished in white. So if your craft room is white, that's a great option for you to match everything together. Mine are those wood colors, but white is a really great way to go too, to keep it nice and clean and simple. These marker units are also from Stampin' Storage. I really love those. I've got three of them. They keep your markers and pens tilted upwards and they're really easy to grab and store them and separate out your markers from each other. And there's also this paper unit from Stampin' Storage, which again has lots of different compartments. I tend to use this paper storage quite a bit to separate out the large sheets of cardstock in my craft room. And again, I just really love the quality wood of these. They're really nice solid units that have lasted me years and years in my craft room. So yes, they're an investment, but they last a long time, which I really love. And this Stampin' Storage unit is definitely the one that I get one of my most uses from. I keep it on its side in a drawer next to me so that it's really easy to get to. I like to store my ink pads on their side, but if you like to store them flat right side up, you can totally tilt this unit up as well and have it against your wall. And this unit is actually for distress ink. So my inks don't go all the way inside of it, but I actually like that because they're raised a little bit and I'm easily able to grab them out like this. This unit is also meant to store markers alongside of it and re-inkers inside of here. 
But instead of doing reinkers, I actually keep these little blending tools and I just throw them right inside of here. Again, it's a perk of having it on its side like this, but I have a blending tool for every color. So this makes it really easy to sort of blending tools right next to the ink pads that are along with it. Again, I really love that quality wood feel of these units. They're super high quality and have lasted me a super long time. I got a little bit of room to grow before I have to buy another unit in the back there. But again, great quality, I highly recommend it. And I love that each one has its own compartment that I can pull the inks out of and I'm easily able to place them back and store them once I need to. And they're tucked away in a drawer so you can just close the drawer once you're done crafting. So I'll link down below to several of the Stampin' Storage units. I believe I have a referral code and probably a discount code as well, which I leave down there. I can't recommend them enough. They're really kind people. And again, super high quality units that you're investing in. And I found that once I invested my money into the units, I used my supplies a lot more because they were stored really well. And because we talked about those blending tools, I also wanted to talk about blending brushes. I know these are all the rage lately. I've been really loving these little mini blending brushes from Altenew, but I needed a way to store them. So again, I went on Amazon, I tested lots of different units, and this one seems to be the best. It's actually a storage organizer for lipsticks, believe it or not, but it fits these little blending brushes really nicely. So this one is super sturdy, quality, clear acrylic. I've got them organized in rainbow order here, and I've got a couple extras in case if I need to add more colors. I just have one for each color family instead of having one for each color. I find that these blending brushes don't soak up as much ink as the sponges do, so one for each family is perfect for me. And then they each have their own little slot and compartment too, so again, it's easy to pull them out and store them back into each other. I think you guys are probably sensing a theme here. I love to have things compartmentalized. It makes it easier to put back and not have them all together in one bin and really messy. I'll leave a link down below and it'll probably fit many brands of little mini blending brushes like this. All right, so that's all I have to share in today's video. Lots of storage solutions that are new or have been working for me for a long time and I really wanted to share with all of you. I get some questions about my craft room and storage, so I hope this gave you kind of an insider peek on how it looks. It's not always super perfect and not every drawer is always super cohesive, but I'm working to get better organized and make sure there's a home for everything so it's easy to clean up once I'm done. Like I said, there will probably be more videos like this as I organize individual drawers and things like that. I'll kind of bring you guys along and give you a sneak peek. So again, if you're having those same problems, hopefully it'll help you too. And again, I'll have links down below to everything that I used in today's video so you can find them and hopefully they work for you as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you all soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.